Hello and welcome to another episode of Fake News Show. You know how we do it on this show? This is where we talk about all you need to know about fake news. What is fake news though? Where it come from? How they take affect me and you? How do they identify them? Avoid fake news. How to report it and lots more. Stay with us. We have lots of fun on this episode for you. This particular episode of fake news, we are going to be looking at something very important. You say what? How does fake news affect or misinformation? How does it affect reproductive health? Mm-hmm. Reproductive health. Man and woman things. Mm-hmm. You see, having children is a big deal in Africa. Because we know the joke with children, you know, twins or triplets, so we like children in African culture. Now, it's understandable when maybe there's pressure on couple. Small time now, a person marry, you never, baby never come and say, ah, Alpha, now don't go check up. Wait, maybe now your wife, maybe the husband. When there's delay in production, we are always stressing couples in Africa. Now, some couples maybe they've been trying for a particular child, maybe now a girl picking the one born and a boy picking the one they don't try, you know, the quick walk, you know, pressure is there. So Africa will like children. That's why I'm going to be talking about how does fake news or misinformation, how does it affect the productive health? That's why it's important. Fasting your seat bet <laughs> on this episode. Another roller coaster, better information on fake news on this episode. Don't go anywhere, join us after this break. <laughs> Yeah, the widespread and circulation of fake news on health is potentially dangerous. So, or quite dangerous. And it's because, you know, medical experts, they need information. They rely on information. Patients rely on information to identify and treat disease. Now, according to a very strong research, infertility affects an estimated 15% of couples around the world. That's around 48.5%, uh, so 48.5 million couples. Now, Matt, young you as they go, eh? you say disease, chlamydia and gonorrhea are the two leading causes of preventable infertility. The grammar big abi, fertility, we say many person not feel born, but we say they feel prevent. That's the leading cause of it. Now, if there's misinformation about such a thing, you see how it can affect reproduction and fertility issues. And this condition can lead to serious complications. That's why you need information, correct information about your reproductive health, woman and man things. But now, before we, we have special experts that are going to tell us, we have an IVF, a fertility expert rather, that's going to talk to us about how misinformation and uh, fake news can affect uh, reproductive health. Some people believe that uh, in, there are some things that you can do, maybe you, too much sugar, it affects man back, it affects performance. She's not true. They are, as soon as if you drink soft drink too much, uh, the, the semen, good day, watch your, watch your, good day. Is it true? All this fake news too plenty. We believe so many things that are not. On this episode, we are talking about it. Medical expert is here. Before the medical expert come, Mo go on the streets. What are people saying on the street? Oh, Mo will check them out. Follow me, or nobody let me go see him. On the street. Oh yeah now. Let's go. I, I don't want to just give answers yes or no. I know that modern medicine has there's a lot of research behind it. And so they may know exactly where they're heading to. But I also know that traditional medicine too is not to be discarded. Where I come from, they can fire somebody with a den gun and somebody will bring out the pellets by just incantations. So is that not effective? The only thing that we, don't, we can't prove it, we don't know how they're able to do it. We have not investigated it to see how we can improve upon it. Honestly, traditional drugs are supposed to work better. Because modern medicine, some of the modern medicines are, are acidic. They, it has been naturalized with some with some chemicals. But the traditional drugs, it depends the herbalist. If he know the actual uh, drugs, if he know the actual leaves that he will bring for you. So for me, I prefer the traditional drugs. It depends the sickness. There is some sickness where uh, uh, it depends on uh, uh, traditional medicine. But we get some sickness that uh, this English one, you cannot uh, cure it unless traditional one. <laughs> Matt, I do. You have waiting people they talk on the streets. Eh? They are so. What do you think? You believe them? You agree with them? You see, as I said, science, all this information we just share, they send it in WhatsApp group. Uh, uh, they send, they forward it on Facebook or on your internet. We need to verify. 
is there. That's why we went on the street to listen to what Nigerians are saying and on this misinformation and uh, uh, disinformation on, 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 on the productive air. That's why we went there. Thank you for staying with us on Fake News Show. We've just gone to the street to hear what people are saying. Like I told you, we have a special expert on fertility who is coming to be hygiene us, hygiene us, better information, all the misinformation that you have heard, you know, are going to be debunking it for you here on Fake News Show. So now we're going to go to Let's Talk and talk about misinformation that affects reproduction with our experts. Let's go. If you're just joining us, this is Fake News Show, and it's time for Let's Talk. You know, on this show, we always bring fantastic people to talk to us about important issues. Dr. Otabo Christopher is from, he's the medical director of Alliance Hospital here in Abuja. So you're welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Let's quickly go into some definitions. What is fake news? Fake news is any information that is disseminated, that is false, with an intention to mislead the receiver of the news. Hmm. Interesting, to mislead. Yes. And in your uh, practice of, uh, of, of, of surgery, what is the most uh, shocking misinformation you've seen in your practice in orthopedics? Well, it's difficult to place your finger on any particular um, misinformation because you come across them every day and they are varied. But for me, the, most, the biggest challenge is the attitude of Nigerians towards treatment of major injuries and fractures. There's this misconception that traditional bone setters um, are probably better in terms of treatment of fractures than orthopedic surgeons. Nothing can be far from the truth than that. Because at the end of the day, more than 60% of uh, what I do as an orthopedic surgeon is trying to treat the complications of traditional bone centers, bone centers intervention. So and it depends on where you practice. In some places that are more rural, any orthopedic surgeon would be talking about 80% of his patients haven't visited um, traditional bone setters. So because of that, you find that patients lose their best chance of getting the best result because uh, your first, the first few days after the injuries is the best chance to get the, the best result. So I haven't gone uh, to those guys they we lose that chance and many times there are complications joint complications some people actually develop gangrene that would lead to amputation and so on and so forth so, 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 so it's a big challenge what you're saying now is that people generally are misinformed about orthopedics or orthopedic surgery or orthopedic injuries meaning things like you break hand do uh, you break leg or, or you get head injury from okada or anything bone related yeah? so people believe that traditional people Papa yes. better than doctors or that they are cheaper which one now yeah f f whatever it is that is their motivation to go there from some it's cost others is just myth um for many others is ignorance the reason i said this the reasons are varied because you sometimes you find educated people graduates even mm. phd holders mm. going to traditional bone setters sometimes you find rich guys who could have afforded uh, treatment by f in the hospital by a specialist orthopedic surgeon, they still visit them, and so on and so forth. So it's not one factor, but based on my experience, by and large, the strongest factor why people go is um, financial. Mm. But they rationalize it by saying that um, our forefathers used this method and, and they did well. What I always tell them is, during our forefathers' time that they talk about, there were no ballistic missiles, there were no high-speed vehicles, there were no gunshots, there were no, no dangerous spots, um, you know, far from very great heights. So what they probably were dealing with was just f uh, fall in the well, 
you know, and, you know, minor things. And they didn't even have documented good results. So it's not about, for some people who tra visit the traditional bone setters, their bones will, will join or it will unite. But how would it unite? That's the thing. Because even if you don't go anywhere, after a fracture and you go home, as long as you stay in one place, your bone will unite. Mm. That, yes, that's a natural process. But how would it unite? What would be the outcome, functional outcome? Some people, after treatment, their leg will be facing one direction, their body will be facing the other direction. That's, okay. not, that's not a good outcome. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the tide is splint so tight, and they don't even know what they are treating because no x-rays, no CT scan, no MRI. Mm. Even if they did, they can't interpret it. And then when the blood vessels are cut off, then the hand becomes gangrenous. Mm. Of course, naturally, you have to take off that um, by amputation. So, so it's it's a big challenge, and we need to we need to regulate those guys' um, activities, and the government needs to rise up to this occasion. Is it fake news that if you wake up in the morning, the first piece when you piece, that first urine is good for the body? It can flush out mm -hmm. all the this thing. And if you use it to wash your eye, your eye will become clear. If you are if your eye is looking bala bala somehow, <laughs> first urine or the conk one. Well, that that's fake news. Why? It's misleading. There's no um, research that supports that. And besides, it's even risky. Okay. Because the urine contains harmful substance. That's why it's called a waste. Do you drink waste? Urine is waste. It's what the body does not desire that is filtered through the urine. And then it's supposed to be discarded. It contains all sorts of things, ammonia, sometimes it contains bacteria, and so on and so forth. So drinking it again, you are, you are loading your system with toxins. You stand the risk of uh, getting infection, and you are just simply compromising your health. So that's false. I can, I can tell you that for free, that people should disregard things like that. Battery water, uncle. Maybe somebody's eyes wants Apollo want to kill him. Just take small battery water, the diluted one. Because I was in a hospital. Okay, battery water is acid. Yes. Yeah. So and even the layman should know that acid is dangerous to the body. Not the conk one. Yes, whether it's conk or not. Okay. Yes. But though the higher the concentration, the more severe will be the the consequences it's of using that. Is it possible to clone a human being? Not the president. It's not me that said it. They say it was cloned. So I don't know the one that is there now. Maybe I, we have different copies that we're just taking one by one. Mm -hmm. and you know that if you drink mango and gari, it's kaput to the other side. You don't know. <laughs> hey, <laughs> doctor, you don't, I know something you don't know. When we come back from the break, we'll take a short break now. <laughs> doctor Otabo Christopher is still with us. From, he's the medical director of Alliance Hospital here in Abuja. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Not go anywhere. One, two, three. Now I can send these stories to my brother. He must share it with my mother. What are you sending to your aged mother? Come and read. I found these stories on the internet. Wait, did you verify these stories to be sure they are facts? Verify? Why? Have you not heard that it is important for you to always verify stories by doing these five before sharing them? Five things? That's too much for just one story. First, check the headline if it's sensational. Check the news sites that publish it to ensure it's credible. You double check to make sure the same piece has been published by other credible media organizations. Oh, really? Yes, check the dates the story was published and finally seek experts' opinion and possibly advice on the report. Wow, I'll quickly verify these by checking the headline, date, source and seek experts' opinion before I forward them to my brother and mother. This message is brought to you by the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD. You should only share information from credible sources. Welcome back, guys. It's Fake News Show. And on this segment of Let's Talk, we have been talking. Talking to who? A very special guest today. An erudite scholar, a professional to the core in the medical field, Dr. Otabo Christopher. He's the medical director of, um, of Alliance Hospital here in Abuja. He's an orthopedic surgeon, and we've been talking about fake news the effects on our health and society. A lot of people have said the president was cloned, or maybe he's being cloned, or will be cloned, I don't know. I don't know the copy of the president that is operating now. I don't know if there's backup. But that's what they said, though. What's the medical point of view? Is it true that they clone? 
the president? Or maybe somebody has cloned him? Mm. Well, um, I've heard that news uh, several times. Uh, nothing can be further from the truth than that. To say that Mr. President was cloned, I think that is preposterous. Well, we're not cloning. Yeah, the people, people just want to um, misinform and and um, create confusion. I, I, honestly speaking, I, I don't think it's worth the hype that the press and the media has given it. So, are you saying they can't clone presidents? People can be cloned, but people, a, an adult, cannot be cloned hmm? overnight. Yeah, the technology of cloning is with us, okay, uh, no doubt. But if you clone a human being, like the ship was cloned, Dolly. Mm -hmm. Dolly is the first well, successful cloning, where a cell was taken from the, the breasts of a, sh a ship and then cloned, as it were, reproduced. And another ship came out. That's cloning. That's all we're saying. Yes, but that ship that came out was a baby ship. And it has to go through a process of growth until it becomes an adult. Then it, it, it will now get to um, the age of the person that they are talking about. So Maybe they did it down. They did it down. You mean many years ago? Many years ago. There was no technology for cloning at that time. Yeah. Yes, it, it's not possible for... Uh, for Mr. President to have been cloned 70-something years ago, and he's coming now to take over the, the office of the president. You know, they assume something has happened to the real Mr. Uh, Mr. President, and it's the cloned version that is in Asurok. It's just maybe they, maybe they had, maybe they do the cloning. I'm coming because <laughs> this thing maybe they do the cloning. Eh? They do it now. Yeah. Then they quickly fast forward the thing so that you can go <laughs> well. Well, I don't know that we have chicken that is mature. In the, in I, I understand you. You are being sarcastic about it now. That means you don't believe it. Well, it's true. If, I mean, that's an intelligent. No, I'm just asking. I'm <laughs> maybe <laughs> is it doctor that I'm cloning everybody? Well, the truth. Yeah, I've sp I've stated the fact. The issue of cloning, Mr. President, is completely um, unscientific. It's, it's outside the realm of good reasoning. What is the greatest impact of misinformation in the medical field, generally speaking, not only orthopedics now? It's, thank you so much for that question. It is very, very costly. Many people have died. Many people have become permanently deformed. Many people have become um, depressed as a result of medical misinformation. L I'll give you an example. A, a, a young lady came to me, had breast cancer, stage two. And I said, you know what? You need to, we need to evaluate you and we will need to take out your breasts or take out the lump. And she said, doctor, I'll be back. The next thing, she disappears. And I didn't see her again until after one year plus. By the time she's coming back, she has a huge mass that is ulcerated, smelling. And um, I asked, was, why, where have you been? She said, they told me about one hydrotherapy for breast cancer, alternative medicine for breast cancer. I've been taking a certain kind of diet, and then it got worse until it got to where it was. Of course, the lady died. Yeah, I mean, you, there, some of these things are so, um, they are, they are they are very delicate decisions between life and death. Mm. And you are telling someone, this is the way to go. But because he has received another information that is false, so he follows or she follows that wrong information. And then it leads them to know where at the end of the day, the, the, their lives are cut short. Is your association or uh, you know, the body of medical doctors with your relationship with government, are you doing anything to inform people, to let people know about all this misinformation and the problem. Yeah, to an extent, but but I can tell you that the problem is is overwhelming mm. because people sit in their bedrooms and cook up stories. Mm. They cook up rubbish and just post. There are over 200 million Nigerians and almost half of that number have access to internet. So how do you begin to control 
100 million people who are at liberty to post anything from their phone. To counter every single false news, medical false information that gets into the information highway is almost impossible. But the very alarming ones, for instance, during the um, Ebola period mm -hmm. and all that, when people were talking about taking um, bitter cola and all that. What about salt? Are you saying salt? Yes, bath? salt and all that. Some that, of people, they bath with yes, salt and they survive. Yes, during, during that period, the medical association came out with a strong statement to condemn that because it has a catastrophic effect. It's, it's, the effect now is beyond just the person. Mm. Yes, it, could, it, could, it would, could be very risky for many people. So for such, uh, for such the medical association, the government officers, they come out to counter it. But the everyday one that says, use your urine to clean your eyes, take onions for this, you know, rub garlic, you eat garlic for this. We, we can't control that. So w what is important is that people should be told to check with their doctors before they do anything. So you're trying to say bathing with salt. Bathing with salt does not cure Ebola. <laughs> we have passed that stage. I think most Nigerians know that by now. <laughs> okay, okay. What about if you want to see ghosts? Yeah. You can use or systems that are non normal. You can use the that dirty thing from the eye of dog. If you rub it, you will see the other realm, the well, other dimension. I was not trained to see ghosts in my practice. Uh, yes, so and you know you see but what I can see is that that stuff that comes out from the eye of the of the dog, yeah. if you put it in your eyes, you risk uh, having infection in the eyes. Mm. Yes, what the dog is backing at that people cannot see mm. a very high pitch sound uh, from afar okay and the dog realm. yes no within within oh, this okay. realm yeah. but there are the, is a sound that the human ear cannot pick mm. the dog can pick it mm. but it's real it's there so people think the dog you know uh, is involved in something transcendental okay. something that uh, is beyond humans but it's just the pitch of the sound that the dog is barking at okay. so they now extrapolate to say that the dog has certain powers that humans don't have and then they want to take what the dog uh, from coming from the eyes of the dog perhaps per adventure they will see the things the dog cannot can see we've run out of time thank you very much dr Otabo christopher from the um you are the medical director of alliance hospitals and I have heard a lot of impressive things about Alliance Hospital. I hear you guys are doing brain surgery, open heart surgery. Kidney transplant. Kidney transplant. In this country? Yes. It's not fake news. Joint replacement. You joint. Can, I can invite you to come pay a visit. And I will be there when you are removing the brain. Well, and if you are well down, we can we can have you in theater to, to see, see some... Are brain. We don't remove the brain. We take away the problem in the brain, like and tumor, like brain tumor, or so if someone is bleeding in the brain. You remove it and close the brain back. Yes. True, true, it's not fake news. It's not fake news. Well, you are washing eyes. Like, if my, like this, my eye that is dirty. Somebody go to club, you drink, and the eye is dirty now. You can bring it, you wash the eye and put it back. You put it and wash the eye on it and put it back. There's you not, say you wash eye. There's nothing like that. You can't wash eye. There's, not, the there's nothing, there's no such thing as maybe wash. Maybe you don't have the soap. Well, maybe the traditional healers would do that, but not not us. Yeah, but in the hospital now, a doctor, tell so us if, this if, doctor, there, if there is something wrong with your eye, yeah. the doctor will look at it and prefer the necessary solution, but there's no such thing as washing eye. You can't bring out the eye and wash it and put it back. You cannot. If you bring it out, you wash it and go. What will happen? Uh, well, you, you have lost the eye. You can't put it back. No. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard it. There's no me that. Don't, they say don't wash your eye. They, 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 they can't remove your eye and wash it and put it back. They say it's fake news, so give yourself brain. <laughs> I've been talking to Dr. Tabor Christopher. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't go anywhere. We have lots more for you after this. More fake news to bust. Not go anywhere. Are you recording? Hello, hi. They say some people, people are spreading fake news all around. Some of you, you will receive when WhatsApp blockers message before you know you have, you have, you have received it. You will not verify information. Some people you even put it on blog. Spreading fake news. All the, all, all the. You think it's right? That's what you are doing. No, you think that thing as you are, as you are spreading the fake news, you think you are doing you are doing the right thing. Stop spreading it. You should stop it. 
resist that uh, temptation that will make you spread fake news. You verify information before you post it. Rubbish. Cut. I wish you cut. Cut the video now. What happened? I might not know when do it. I said I finish. Not cut. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Fake News Show. We just had a chat with our fertility expert on misinformation and disinformation or fake news around reproductive health. Oh, you know, man and woman's reproduction or oh, all those fake news, you know, about reproductive health. And you can cause a talk to a lot of problems. That's why it's important to talk about it. If you are misinformed, you can be deformed. Mm -hmm. So now, eh, uh, we're not going to show you or debunk some fake news or misinformation about health in this report. Catch out yourself, oh, open eye down, open your ear, oh, call your neighbor, call your friend, even call your enemy, join. Fake news that want to debunk, it affects you. CDD Fact Check Report. Fake News Alert. Did 50 Nigerian lawmakers test positive to COVID-19? This claim remains unproven. Both chambers of National Assembly have debunked the report that 50 lawmakers have tested positive to COVID-19. Speculations that the 50 lawmakers tested positive is unproven. CDD urges members of the public to verify claim before sharing them. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on this show of fake news. We have told you all how reproductive health is affected by misinformation and disinformation. On behalf of the entire team, when package this show, can't give you. This show is an initiative of, an initiative of CDD West Africa with uh, the support of USAID and NDI. And I want to thank you for staying with us. Next week, we have another better, better episode. We won't summer you. Not go anywhere. Tell your friend about this. Tweet it. Send us a message. Thank you for watching Fake News Show. of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.